Here we go. Morning, Richard. Brian Hankins, Clean Air Removal. Thank you for being here, my friend. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Appreciate you saying yes to this. Have you done a podcast before? No, I haven't. It's first, first one. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll it'll be fun. It'll be oh. good. My goal is usually just to kind of shine a light on some of these entrepreneurs that I work with, people I collaborate with, kind of get an idea of what they do, how they do it, how they started, you know, their challenges, their up da- upsides, downsides of what they do. But uh, I want to uh, thank you for being here, for, you know, uh, saying yes again. And um, what are the the people that really, really appreciate what you do besides your customers, the group of people that honestly can say that, man, they love the fact that you do this are my installers. Uh-huh. They, <laughs> they don't yeah. have to, uh, you know, I've been doing this long enough. So, you know, whenever my installers had to come in and demo a floor, demo a tile, demo wood, it was like, oh, they just loathed, yeah. loathe that uh, because it's such a pain to do what you do, man. And uh, now it's like, you know, whenever I schedule a job and I tell my guys, yeah, we got to do a floor, you know, the demo team's there and they come in now like, man, everything's clean, ready to go. And uh, they're very, very grateful for that. Yeah. So. <laughs> I understand. I was an installer for a long time That's and right. I, I hated it too yeah. without the right equipment. I, you know, when I knew I had a demo coming up, I would not sleep the night before going up, man, I hope it comes up easy or, yeah. you know, you get lucky sometimes. But when did uh, you start, you start, you started installing a, at an early age? Installing, said? yeah, I was 15. Really? Yeah. Was my your family, family business yeah, okay. down South Padre Island. We had a... Really? South Padre? Yeah. My grandpa started a business in Is the 70s. Yeah. I grew up there. I was born okay, there. I'm from McCallum, the Valley. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. The Valley. Yeah. I was just there yesterday, actually. I was in Harlingen and... We had a job, so we'll go. We'll travel anywhere. Are you so, all down in South Texas now? Well, uh, we just travel. There's a store down there th- th- that we work for. Um, they have a location here, and sometimes they get they have a location there as well. Oh, gotcha. And they'll if they get a customer asking and they're real mm-hmm. picky, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want dust, mm-hmm. they'll refer them to us. Gotcha. And uh, we ch- we have to charge for travel, obviously, mm-hmm. and if they're willing to pay it, we'll go down there. Sure. So we just finished a big job in Harlingen. Nice. Okay. So you started installing. In the valley. In the valley. South Padre. 15. Uh, yeah, I told my parents, uh, you know, I'm tired of school. This is boring. <laughs> you know? Really? I'll, I'll work I'll work with the family business. I don't need school. Did they have a store? It was just... Yeah, we had a store. It's not there anymore. <clears throat> my grandpa passed and... and uh, Sorry, in South Padre? In Port Isabel. Or which Port is Isabel, the, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, side, yeah. That's where... But we worked at South Padre like every day. You know, you have to go over the bridge and all the condos. You know, we did all the condos, a lot, oh. of, a lot of those houses. Mostly tile, right? Uh, Well... This hard, was this was the nineties. So yeah, but there wasn't I, like any type of LVP back then. No or, LVP or, was sheet vinyl. I did oh, a lot vinyl, of sheet yeah. vinyl, mm-hmm. a lot of carpet. That's what I started in, mm-hmm. and then we got into tile. I mean, we had a tile division there. Mm-hmm. Did a lot of the condos tile, mm-hmm. some hardwoods for some custom builders. Mm. So it was fun, yeah. you know, working on uh, during spring break was. A I was tough. about to mention spring break. <laughs> it, you know, traffic <laughs> was no good. So when you work during spring break, you had to you know account for that. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. Everyone always is like, ah, oh, you're so lucky to live here. And it's like, no, man, you're I, I grew up here, man. Yeah. Did yeah. you have brothers and sisters that I helped have, in the business? Or? Um, well, actually, it was, yeah, it was a family business. My, I have two older sisters, but they didn't really get into the business. But my mom was, you know, sales and, and accounting, bookkeeper. My dad was an installer. And then my cousin. Um, and then my other cousin, her husband got into it. My friends from high school, they all came along, you know. Really? So it was it was a real small community, uh-huh. and, and we all, you know, we taught lots of people how to do flooring. Nice. You know, and they've all branched out now. So it's, it's a good industry, man. It's, it, you know, it's interesting because I started doing this when I was 19. Oh, yeah. um, you know, go, got introduced to the industry at that age and never looked back, basically. Yeah. It's like been doing it ever since. But uh you know, it's it's not maybe what I thought I was going to be doing at 15 or 16 years old. You know, I knew I was going to be doing something. I think I was going to – I always had that entrepreneurial spirit. No, but, yeah. Um, but, the, but the foreign industry is actually a good industry, man. It's definitely something that, you know, you, you can make a good living off of. But. Yeah, that's what we always looked at. It. It's a trade that you will always have a job. Mm-hmm. You know, people are always going to need flooring. So even if you get out of it for a little bit, which I, I did for a couple of years. They suck you, get, you back in. Yeah, you come back and, uh, you know, but – I went to USAA for a few years, which is a great experience. You know, I, I think it helps with running a business now because I learned a lot of good things mm-hmm. working there. You know, customer mm-hmm. service, they do a really good job of that in training mm-hmm. um, and how they treat their employees. You know, they, they treat their employees really well. And we've kind of tried to model our business mm-hmm. the same way. You know, mm-hmm. obviously, we're not as big as them, but we like to treat our employees, you know, 
try and give them as much compensation as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, no one's ever going to be happy with compensation, sure. right? But, but you know, we we offer as, for a company like ours and in this industry, you know, we have employees. They're all. Um, you know, we don't use subs. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all hourly guys, but I mean, we provide benefits, um, PTO, um, you know, lots of different things to try mm-hmm. and help them, which I think in, in the foreign industry, as long as I've been in it, mm-hmm. it's it's always, you're just a sub mm-hmm. and that's it. You know, right. that's where it stops. So you learned uh, some of that working at USA? Yeah. How old were you then? Uh, 23 to 27 in that, so that you, time so frame. So you moved to San Antonio? I moved to San Antonio. My sister actually, yeah, she married a guy from San Antonio, moved here. She got a job there. Uh, she was in HR in the hiring mm. the hiring division. So, so you knew a girl. Yeah. And it, <laughs> you know, we both were going through a time in, at 23 and we decided to, to help each other out. She, she invited me up here and I, I moved up here and I've been here ever since. Mm. Never went back. And uh, yeah. yeah. So when I moved up here, I, w- I tried to, you know, get out of the hard labor, mm-hmm. maybe see what it would be like working at USA. And I liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I learned a lot of great things. But after a while, I started looking around and no offense to anyone at USA, by the way. But I saw some people, you know, in their 40s, 50s, been there a long time. And they're just sitting at a desk doing the same oh, yeah. thing every day. Yeah. And I was like, man, I really miss being out, driving around, sure. getting to go, you know, we get to go in million dollar homes and right. see, you know, amazing properties. Um, There's a it, thing to that because not everybody's, uh, you know, wired up to sit behind a desk and some people are. Some yeah. people are just, that's, they can do that every day. I couldn't do that either. That's right. why I knew, yeah. to your point, in our industry, uh, one, of, one of my favorite things about doing what I do is the fact that you get to meet a lot of people. You get to meet different personalities. Your uh, The drawbacks, sitting behind a desk you're just in your little cubicle you know you're just in your little um circle and you're not really able to kind of really connect with people and and get to meet people so that is a blessing at least for what we do i think but you know once you left usa how did you get back into the installation part of it or flooring so that yeah so my my dad and my my mom they sold their part of the business down there Mm -hmm. to my uncle and they wanted me and my sister were here um so they wanted to move me closer to us. Mm. So they moved up here and decided my mom ended up working for a store here as a salesperson. Okay. And okay. my dad uh, also went into sales. But then, you know, one day my mom was in sales and, you know, installers were two, three weeks out. I've got this job. It's an emergency. <laughs> hey, dad, like hey, dad <laughs> bro, you know, son, uh, I need your help. Can yeah. you install this job for me? And we're like, sure, you know, we'll do it. And uh, so we did that, and then it just it we just got basically got back into it. Mm-hmm. Me and my dad were a team. What was your dad's name? Uh, Bill Bill yeah. Hankins. Um, it's interesting because, I, and I was just sharing this with someone else, but there's money to be made in this trade and uh, on the oh, install yeah. side of it, um, the labor side. And um, I, unfortunately, though, I've been doing this quite a while, so a lot of it, uh, you know, could be charged by the foot or depending on what you're doing by the yard. Um, you can make money if you're skilled and if you're good at it. But unfortunately, the market sometimes doesn't let you kind of compare to cost of goods, inflation. There are guys still that will do tile installs for what I was paying 20 years ago. Right. They're not going to get, you're not going to get a good install more than likely, but there's, there's the market somewhat inundated with a, a lot of laborers, installers, if you will. But once you weed through that and get the good, good, uh, teams together uh there's there's definitely money that can that can be made off of it i mean you know it's it's a good it's a good trade it's a good skill obviously it can get taxing on the body after a while especially if you're on your knees a lot or you know yeah you definitely should have an exit plan you know and that's that's why i look at a lot of installers and and even my guys you know you can't do this till you're 60 a a few guys have i've seen but you know you got to start getting an exit plan in in your mid 40s figuring out okay 50 55 what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And that, you know, I, I got fortunate to, to, you know, get into this um, because I, you know, always wondered that too. When I was 30, I was like, what am I going to do when I'm 50? And my dad did this till he was, I don't know, 56, 57 before he retired. Um, so, it, and it, the good thing is you do stay in shape, right? You're out there sweating yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, it's, well, the, the, the thing you, you do, you're, it's a physical, um, you know, it's physical work, but, I, I always remember, and, and I and you know I, I can't say that I I'm working on on their s- skill myself a lot. You know, when, when I first started years ago 
mean, I'd help out some of the installers get, you know, install flooring or help with carpet. I can't say that I do that now still, but, um, but I, I, I have so much respect for these guys because, um, some of the carpet installers, I think that's the worst part, the harder part, because you have to carry carpet sometimes uh, up the stairs, yeah. you know, or and they're heavy. And then also uh, their hands get real calloused, right? Yeah. I always sometimes yeah. when I shake my guy's hands, they're like, they're kind of, they don't shake real hard because they're sometimes they're just kind of, you know, over over time, it's like you, your hands get kind of tired and they get rough and stuff. And you can always, you can always tell who's, yeah. who's who does what. Yeah. And, uh, and then their knees kind of start to give out stuff. But to your point, you definitely, dude... You have to have an exit plan. But one of my installers, my wood guys, he just turned 65. Wow. His name's Roger Gomez. And he's for sure a, a, a craftsman at what he does. And it's really the reason why we're successful in a sense, because you're only as good as your installers. Right. I always repeat that at nauseum sometimes. But um, 65 years old, man, and he's been able to kind of, you know, keep himself in shape and, and, you know, keep himself healthy. But I tell him. Let me know when you plan on retiring because <laughs> you're you know, finding you yeah. got to prepare. <laughs> yeah, I got to find a replacement for yeah. you. And uh, but uh, you know that transition though. Talk to me how that um, you know turned into to what you're doing now. Yeah. So like I said, working for my mom, installing her job. She worked at a store and she took over their insurance department, right? Because um, like USAA, State Farm, they all have a, a insurance program where they they use the stores. Um, to to handle their claims basically mm -hmm. they get a there's a water loss that they submit it to the insurance right. and the insurance will give the customer an option of, hey i got these three stores you can go directly to them mm -hmm. they'll handle everything and we'll pay them you don't have to do anything um so the the store will then send out someone measure get a sample of the floor that's that that's damaged and affected and send the insurance basically their estimate mm -hmm. and it's discounted you know as, a, mm -hmm. as a part of the program but um so it worked that way. So my mom did almost all insurance replacements, meaning water damage. So that's where we were almost every week doing wood demo. Mm. All right, water damage wood's got to come up, and she used us for most of those. So that's where I was saying, you know, on Sunday night, I knew I had a thousand feet of wood to take up. And the old school way, guys, you know, you cut it, and then you got pry bars or big, you know, mm -hmm. big big hammers and stuff, and it was hard work. Mm -hmm. Um so over time, one of my buddies from high school, like I said, who we taught the business, he had gone all over the world doing installs and stuff. And he... The world. Yeah. I mean, he's you know, Mexico, Canada, here yeah, and there, New, but the New world. York, New yeah. Jersey. Okay. And uh, so he worked with a lot of different um, big companies. Mm -hmm. And um, there there was a machine he, he told me about. It was large and it would do wood removal. Mm -hmm. um, it was fairly new back then in the mid, you know, 2007, 2008, but... It was expensive, mm -hmm. you know, it was $12,000. Well, we don't have that kind of money. Most installers don't usually sure. have money for tools like that. But anyway, for the store that I was working for doing demo every day, I said, I got to have this. And I went to the owner and I talked to him. And, one, you know, I got real desperate one, one time because we had a job that was just horrible. I said, look, I'll make you a deal. I said, you buy the machine for me, finance it. Mm -hmm. I'll pay you back. And while I'm paying you back, I'll discount all the demos I do for you, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I, you know what they were paying back then was like a dollar twenty five a foot, Jeez. and I, I did all in all demos for a dollar a foot until I paid off the machine, and <clears> I, <throat> I paid it off in like a year. Right, <laughs> I was like, let's get it get it taken care of. But that was the start, basically, um, where we decided we said, hey, you know what? There's something to be had with just doing demo, mm -hmm. like becoming um, experts a specialist at demo. Right, yeah. and, and there was an article I read back then in a floor trade magazine. That said that it said people are missing the opportunity on demo like mm. everyone overlooks it it's mm -hmm. just it's what you have to do to get to the install mm -hmm. but there is a there's a market there right. to 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 you know mm -hmm. become an expert at it and just do demo but as a specialty mm -hmm. and uh yeah i put that on the back burner and just kept installing um but doing lots of demo with this machine and from there, we started exploring the What's, What kind of machine was this? It's a wood scraper. It's okay. hydraulic. It's pretty big. It's like 500 pounds. Um, but it, it'll it do the work of a man basically scraping the wood. It, it's not super fast so much as, yeah. as the fact that it does the job and you can just stand there with the control. So gotcha. you, I could do it for 10 hours without, without breaking a sweat. Gotcha. Whereas other guys are on their knees with a hammer. Or, right. You know, it's a okay. lot of labor. This way, <clears throat> you know. Um, it was just, it was, it helped a lot, you mm -hmm. know, um, I got tired of taking it up by hand, 
so we got that machine in 2011 mm-hmm. and uh started using that on all our demos uh but then in, in 2012 we we found a company out in arizona and i guess he likes to call himself the godfather of dustless right it's, it's a guy out there um he's real proud of himself which you know he's he's created something pretty good out there but we talked to him i gave him a call and asked him about his system his dustless system mm-hmm. and um his 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 model he really wants to just sell his equipment to installers all over the country mm-hmm. but it's very expensive mm-hmm. you know when i called him back then it was like eighty thousand dollars to to buy a set of oh my you gosh. know be a part of his uh, he's probably changed it over 10 years wow. but so i just started looking at uh, some of the vacuums he had and figuring out a way to make my own equipment. Mm-hmm. And it, it took a while, but I finally figured it out in about 2013. Um, and then in 2014, we found we found a vacuum at a pawn shop, a nice one, big one, bought it. And uh, <clears throat> we had a job, customer called, so my husband doesn't want me to do this remodel because of the dust. And we said, hey, I think we have a solution for you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was the first one. It was in Rogers Ranch. And we did the job and there was no dust. Well, I couldn't even believe it. Mm-hmm. It was the first time. I didn't, I didn't think it would work. <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure how good it would work. And I was walking around and we had plastic up just in case. And there was no dust on the plastic. I was like, wow, I can't believe this. Wow. And the homeowner was so happy and thrilled. Um, was that is that the moment that you just said, okay, I think we're on to something? It was definitely the moment I was on to something. And I was going to start marketing it. And, tell, and I, I told my mom, hey, you know. I'll do it for you. We're going to do it for this price. You know, what do you think? She was all on board. She started selling it. Um, But it took a while before I was, I really convinced that it could be a full time thing. You know, I was still installing. It was about a year later. I realized, Hey, we're getting busy. Like we're, we're starting to have installers call us, you know, like um, we do jobs. Like you said, installers Mm -hmm. would see what we do. And they're like, man, I love this. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to use you for all my jobs. Yeah. So that's kind of how it really kickstarted. One installer came came to a job, saw what we were doing, and thought, "Man, I'm I'm never doing demo again." He said, mm-hmm. and he started using us on every job, mm-hmm. and he was started telling every installer he knew, and so we started getting real busy. Nice. And uh, well, I met you, I think, in 2015, 2016 at the at the Home and Garden Show. Yeah, was that one of the first that was times? Our first, I think that was our first show. What year was that? That might have been our second show, twenty seventeen. I think. Okay, so that's when I met you. Um, and it's funny because I never, hardly ever go to the home and garden. Yeah. I don't know why I actually went. Um, and I've had people say, well, you should do, get a booth or whatever. And But uh, we went and um, uh, yeah, I just kind of walked around and then I ran into you and I was like, what is this? And yeah. I remember, yeah, I got your card and we we, uh, we tried it. Man, it's interesting how you've grown from from then to now because now it's like everyone's like you're using the dustless system right like that's the question people ask me now it used to be where i was like selling that like hey by the way we are using a system called uh dust it's a dustless system (laughs) and i always try to predicate that too by saying well it's it's less dust right because i want to make sure i set the expectation yeah you know it is very efficient i mean you literally can just wipe a table and not have any dust but of course you'll always have some people say hey there's a little bit of dust here." comparatively to what the crap storm it typically yeah. is <laughs> when you're demoing. Um, it, it was a selling point, but now it's like, it's like, this is what you're doing, right? The yeah. customer will tell me, oh yeah, yeah, we use clean air. Oh yeah, okay, clean air. So y'all have come a long way, man. And i um, very proud of you in that sense. Uh, and and I'm, I'm sure you still got ways to go, but so as you started developing, what did you have to do? Invest more in, in more uh, equipment and yeah. people? Yeah. We got to a point where, you know, we were doing our best to keep up with demand. We had, I think, two and sometimes three crews, and it was me. And I had two the two friends from high school came along and were, were involved. And so we each kind of had our own crew, basically. But that still wasn't enough. And we're like, man, we don't have money to really do what we need to do. So we started, uh, I, I watched uh, all, you know, The Prophet and uh, Shark Tank a lot. And I was like, man, that's what <laughs> Dude, we got to do. You should have got do. a Shark Tank. Uh, yeah, I thought about it all the time. But <clears throat> there were shows, you know, talk that were about that, in, investing in your business. I said, that's what we need, an investor. So we started shopping around. Um, a friend of mine was interested in investing. Mm-hmm. He, he was really interested. And long story short, it didn't work out. But at the same time, um 
who uh, my landlord was actually a customer, an old customer of mine. I did an install at his house and we really liked each other. He liked my work, my professionalism again, USAA. He had worked at USAA mm-hmm. a long time. So we kept in contact. He used me to do some of his uh, investment property installs mm-hmm. and he became, you know, I ended up renting a house from him. Well, one day I was paying the rent. We we're just talking and I was telling him what was going on with this. And I was like, yeah, but we're growing so fast and we need an investor blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, well, I, I like to invest in wow, things. Like, let, let me yeah. know if you're interested. And I was like, oh, sure. So when that other deal fell through, I called him and said, hey, you know, the opportunity is there if you're really interested. He said, okay. So we were talking and he was like, yeah, I'm interested. He was, you know what? I need to go see this dustless removal what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And this is how he tells the story. He he came to a job site. He said, five minutes, saw what we were doing. said, all right, let's 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 go get a deal done. He We went straight to our office hammered out the deal you know Mm -hmm. shook hands and that was it and uh, he invested a good amount of money um and we were able to buy two more crews worth two trailers vacuums Mm -hmm. all you know the nicest Mm -hmm. equipment out Mm -hmm. there and uh so pretty much right a month or two after that we were done installing it was pure demo it was pure demo and we doubled like that was in July of 2016, mm-hmm. and by the end of the year, we doubled our our revenue wow. that first year, and then the next year we doubled that, mm-hmm. and then the next following year we doubled that. Wow. So it was it was amazing. Like we went from, you know, one crew, two crews, and then in, in four years we had eight crews. And now you're in Austin, Houston. And then, yeah, Austin, and we just opened Houston, and Houston mm-hmm. is starting to take off now. Mm-hmm. So, so those are the three markets. Three markets we're in, but we'll go anywhere. Like so, I said. who's who's helping you manage those? Uh, how, how big is your team now? I mean, obviously you got more crews, but it, as far as from a management side uh, of it, so we had a uh, um, you know long story. My two friends who came in the beginning with me, they're both gone. Long, you know, we we'll talk about that another time. But, <laughs> Hopefully, um, they're still friends. <laughs> so my investor uh, back in 2016, he came in 2017, looked around, said, "You know what? I could do some. I can help here. I'm a businessman." Mm-hmm. He became our CEO then um, and started helping us figure out a lot of processes and things. Mm-hmm. Did a really good job. Um, and then when they one of my friends left in 2018. Uh, it was just me and him, and then I don't know. We, we knew we we're going to grow. We were starting to grow a little more. We wanted to go from here to here. We knew we needed someone else with a little more expertise in other areas. Mm-hmm. So we we found another partner mm-hmm. who bought in, um, and he came from factories and managing you know five hundred million dollar factories or whatever it is, managing people, thousands of workers. Mm-hmm. Um, so we brought him in to help manage the teams mm-hmm. manage structure you know hr mm-hmm. type of stuff right. um processes you know the warehouse equipment and all that so we have him who who basically handles all our employee issues like hr and our equipment issues making sure all our equipment's working mm-hmm. trucks trailers um we he hired a mechanic on staff now we have a a full-time mechanic oh, okay. who he was he's ford certified so he works on all our trucks trailers all our equipment wow um does a really good job uh and you have warehouses in austin and warehouse in houston? austin and houston okay and um i manage i do i do, i have i wear a lot of hats still <laughs> you know and it's just you know me I, yeah. I can't let go of a lot of things i know to to get to the next level i got you i, I really I'm need to i'm in the same boat man i yeah. have a hard time letting go of that control sometimes. and i like i like this mm-hmm. you know i like having relationships with all my customers mm-hmm. you know you mm-hmm. we play golf and mm-hmm. i like mm-hmm. that and it's hard to let that go i definitely don't want to let that go uh-huh. but i also you know i i do a lot of the training and mm-hmm. um quality control and and sales i mm-hmm. still do most mm-hmm. of the estimates um so do you do a lot of uh, your businesses i think naturally been growing but do you still do a lot of like networking and, and branding um to kind of get your name out there? Or? Probably not enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of refocused a little bit on that now, and I think I'm going to try a little more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we really are stayed so busy with word of mouth right. um, referrals and our stores. I mean, 50% of our business is stores like yourself mm-hmm. who just give us repeat business, mm-hmm. you know, without us having to really do much. Right. So um, a couple months ago, we hired a guy out of Houston, mostly because we needed Houston to – to grow, mm-hmm. um, who's our full outside sales. Mm-hmm. He's full-time outside sales. That's all he does. 
Um, so he looks for new customers, Houston, Austin here, but he's also trying to at least stop by stores like yours. Okay. Yeah. Once a month, once face. a quarter, show face, say, Hey, how you doing? We just, you know, it's so, it's so important to, to stay on their radar. And, yeah. and I'll tell you why, especially in your industry, because I think part of your success has, you know, obviously, um, caught a lot of people's attention mm-hmm. and has created competitors, mm-hmm. right? And so oh, yeah. now you've got some competitors are de- basically doing the same thing. Uh, and I've, I know a couple of people that, that, uh, you know, have approached us and, and I'm like, no, 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 Brian's <laughs> the guy. Cause he's always bringing gifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, Speaking of, uh, oh, you okay, want to yeah, yeah. Let's see what it is. <laughs> I, you. I think my friend Fernando, uh, Lozano started with this trend. Yeah. He brought, a, he brought I, me I, I saw that. I was like, man, I gotta do, I gotta oh, do Oh, bro. So. This man. Yeah. You gotta, Here, I'll, sorry, let you, Fern- I'll let you open it. Sorry. Yeah, what, Fernando, what, what are we doing? I love the mug you got me, but I might like this a little more. <laughs> Whatever this is. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Let me do it this way for the camera. There you kinda... I hope you drink. <laughs> do I drink? Is that the question? Well, I think you do. The question is uh, oh, hey, this is super cool. Let's see where the camera is. Look, look, zoom in. Awesome, man. And this is, uh, it says clean air. It's got our logo. So, yeah, like you said, we want, want you to have a nice drink and uh, remember. Clean air. So is this going to be a dustless drink? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. This is br- really nice. I know what I'm going to put in there. Yeah? For what, sure. What do you like? Put some scotch in there. Scotch, there you go. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yeah, I just started drinking scotch. Uh, I like, I've like. i always been a big bourbon drinker, but uh, there's a couple. Of, I like uh, Macallan 12. That's my favorite. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, Dang, Macallan. I got an unopened bottle at home. Uh, we'll, have well to... so... Maybe we should redo this. Let's start over. <laughs> start. I've contemplated uh, actually a couple uh, podcasts before. I, I drank some whiskey with some friends of mine. We were going to go oh, golf, yeah. so we were kind of just getting loose. But I've contemplated, uh, you know, drinking on the podcast. It just depends on what time of day I do this, too, because I got to either drive to the office or. Oh, yeah. But um, anyway, uh, thank you so much. But uh, yeah, this is really cool. The. the um, the competitors, though, are are, are, are kind of sometimes what's flattering to you. That makes you know that you're doing something good. And um, that's going to be part of the challenge, too, right? Anytime you're growing your business, you know. Yeah, we knew we knew competition would eventually come. That's why, you know, we, we focus. There's the, the USAA part is customer service, mm-hmm. right? That's the what I tell all my guys. Dustless removal is important, but customer service is more important. Mm-hmm. Like that's how we really will grow and stay relevant is being the best at customer service. So mm-hmm. everything you do in a customer's house is important mm-hmm. as far as, you know, don't walk in their grass. Don't don't uh, park, you know, ask permission to park in their driveway. Mm-hmm. Don't take food and drinks inside the house. You know, as an installer, we always, you know, we would eat in the house sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I started learning. Customers don't really like that. They won't say anything because they don't want to be confrontational. But in their mind, they don't even like you to use their restroom. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we tell our guys, be very respectful when you're in the home. That's so funny you say don't park on the grass. Because what I always tell my kids and what I've always even, I've never walked on anybody's grass. Walked on anybody's grass. And and some people say, well, what's the deal? Like, well, you're showing respect of their property, number one. Because some people are very particular about yeah. just their grass so literally when as you pull up to your customer and it could be the first interaction that could actually set uh you know you know set a vibe good or yeah. bad you know if they're looking out the window see you pulling up and you're walking across the grass you're like dude this guy doesn't care about my property and yeah. so i don't know i've always been somewhat conscious about that you know not that people are anal but some people are about that and but that's again showing you know respect courtesy you know just for me it's like just simple stuff right um but uh, it's interesting you say that but those are things that we kind of look at and you're, you're right like even using the restroom i'll yeah. tell my guys sometimes unless it's an empty house and we have permission but i was like go to the store or go somewhere yeah. else you know because it's happened too when we've done jobs when there's multiple trades in there and they'll call and say, yeah. hey someone used the restroom and didn't flush and i'm like it's not my guys you yeah. know uh, yeah. and i'm like and i uh, unless you can prove it this day, <laughs> i don't know how you're gonna do that but uh but it is customer service is is huge man and i think if you if you attract the customer that's more than anything um cares more about that than your cost then that's the client you want yeah. right yeah, yeah yeah definitely um you know, but that's 
a lot of our guys, they don't own homes, you know, so they don't know what it's like. Right. They don't understand. You know, I tell, I have to tell that to guys sometimes. You see that mulch and those plants, that homeowner paid for those and installed them himself mm-hmm. or herself. And it's important to them. Mm-hmm. You think it's just a plant, right? It's not. It's it's money and it's time. So if you throw your tools on top of that plant, mm-hmm. you know, or some trash on it, they, they're going to be very disrespected. So guys just don't understand that landscaping costs money. Right. And it's because they don't own a home. So mm-hmm. they don't understand that. And that's, you know, we just got to train them. And we, we do our best to train all our guys on customer service. Mm-hmm. Um What's the biggest challenge now that you're growing? Obviously, you're trying to scale. Are you trying to infiltrate more markets than these three that you're on now? Uh, going to the Valley now more? or I mean, that was maybe a one-off, but is, is your goal to kind of still keep scaling up? Yeah, definitely. I think Houston was kind of our, you know, Austin's so close, it didn't really feel like opening mm-hmm. another market. Mm-hmm. But so Houston was is our first shot. And it, it was, it's been a little bumpy. You know, it's a little difficult because, you know, here it was no – no trouble really because I was an installer here. I right. knew a lot of people in you the relationships industry. I had relationships. Right. It wasn't too hard. But Houston, I knew nothing. I, not only did I know not know anybody, I didn't know the market. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand how it works, what the pay scales are like. Mm-hmm. And we're finding out, you know, uh, there's a lot of installers that will charge practically nothing just to get a job because there's so much competition there. Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing, you know, there's a lot of foreigners who, sure. you know, they, they'll, they say, what I've been told by some of the stores is in, these installers, you know, their families that came from other places and they'll, they'll live together. Mm-hmm. Right. And they all work. So they, you know, they can get away with charging bottom dollar right. for things. And, mm. um, that's the challenge. It's, it's yeah. a challenge. So all the, you know, people we approach with this, the pricing, you know, Oh, we can do it for half of that. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, so it's it's kind of having to do what we did here and introduce this. It's almost brand new. Right. I was going to say because you're almost starting over there because maybe that's not something that's uh, used as much or as or known as much that system. Yeah, there's there, there's only like one company over there offering this. Another a competitor, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and but yeah, there's a lot of people just don't. That's a bigger market too. It's huge, yeah. and that was why we wanted to go there for you know a it's it's a huge market so there's plenty of room mm-hmm. for growth mm-hmm. um but two you know they do flood a lot so you know once we're established there and people understand what we do you know next time they have a big major flood all these contractors will be you know they'll be needing their floors removed and uh seems like there's us. a lot of floods over there too <laughs> there is i mean we we even before we opened there we'd go over there yeah. for for contractors for one offs yeah. you know um and You're like the, the roofers that go to the. <laughs> I don't want to be like the. I don't want to go that far, but you know we don't we don't storm chase or anything. Yeah. But you know, sir, we work for a lot of serve pros, mm. um, a lot of remediation companies, yeah. and they they have locations over there. So once they get word of us, mm-hmm. you know, we had a serve pro from Florida calling us to oh, okay. to go and they because they do serve pro is a company that they'll they'll go. You know, the corporate serve pro will have a lot of their franchises reach out and go. Mm. You know, when there's hurricanes or storms, mm-hmm. they'll travel. So, mm-hmm. a serve pro from here went to Houston in 2017, mm-hmm. and they called us and said, "Hey, get over here. We got a lot of houses that need wood demo." Mm-hmm. You know, so we did that. And uh, the insurance industry is uh, interesting because uh, for the longest time, we've always fought with the costs that they would factor in with yeah. material with the install, but with demo, demo oh, would yeah. be like like no one's gonna show up. <laughs> to, to to a house to demo for what you're pricing or budgeting for, and then obviously there's ways to kind of work around that sometimes with other um, you know items that you could charge a little more like adhesive removal and stuff like that with the insurance specifically because yeah. of their program. But uh, I think over time, especially like the contractors when they uh, get to know like your company or the you know, dustless system, <clears throat> they'll understand. Okay, yes, I know you're not going to be able to do it for this, but we'll we'll make sure we cover your budget to do that because I think there's not only that, but the timing, the time that y'all do, yeah. like y'all knock it out quicker. Obviously, the whole desktop part of it's important, but I think y'all are so efficient and and showing up with your teams, you know, big groups, and you know, a job that would take a week sometimes to demo, y'all can knock out like in two days, you know. Yeah. And so for a, in the construction industry, that's like extra few days. That's gold, man. That's yeah, like if yeah. you can get it done faster, it's going to get 
get you one step closer to finishing, one step closer to to getting paid, you know, and uh, there's definitely a benefit. So I'm actually glad that on the insurance side that they're starting to come around and, you know, understand like, hey, there's a benefit using you guys or using the system. Yeah, we, we've been trying for years to really try and educate all the adjusters out there, right? So that they, True that, they, yeah. they would, okay. you know, when a homeowner or contractor says, hey, I want to use Dustless, they say, oh, okay, yeah, I know these, I know the process, I understand, like you said, a week versus two days, fa- you know, faster, you know, sometimes the homeowners are in a hotel and mm-hmm. the insurance is paying for that. So, you know, for them, it's not just the dust list, but, you know, their customer, their insured's happier. They're paying less for a hotel. You know, there's so many other reasons besides dust list to use us, sure. you know, and that's, that's just the insurance needs to, you know, this was, like I said, I did a lot of the insurance work mm-hmm. when I was installing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I understand how that program works. But I've been really trying to, hoping the program would accept us and have, you know, a straight have, dustless well, removal right, in, like in a part lot of, of their program. Well, I think as as this system is more prevalent, the end user, the homeowner knows about it. So they have to have more, le- well, they'll have more leverage right. against the insurance and they'll say, look, well, we don't want, we want a dustless system. You know, we want, this is the standard now, which I think that's where it's getting to. Yeah. Well, that's it is for sure with on the retail side with what we do on, on, on our jobs because I like, you know, I tell them it's a dust. It's okay. Great. You know, they're not like, yeah. well, we want to, you know, s- spend less for double the time and for more mess. No, they're like, yeah. they'll spend a little more money yeah, for it. And it's, there's value into that. So that's, yeah. a, that's actually a good thing because the insurance industry is for us. One of the things that we're trying to grow because um, it's not that it's a recession proof industry, but when the markets are kind of volatile, yeah. the, the insurance there's always going to be floods, you know, yeah. the, saga, the floods not going to not happen because, you know, the election hasn't happened or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, it happens. And so that part of the market on our end is where we're always trying to grow and then making sure they're on board with this is, is really a benefit. Yeah. the ins- I've always said that too. Yeah. The insurance it doesn't matter what the economy does, but you know, people still have water damage and they, they have the insurance to pay for it. So it's, it's been, you know, when, even when I was installing, it was like that, you know, mm-hmm. when the market, you know, when things slowed down, it wasn't as slow for me because I was doing insurance yeah. work. So the only thing I've noticed this time around is some of the insurance adjusters are getting tighter. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm hearing that from customers and homeowners and contractors that, hey, the insurance is pushing back. You know, the adjuster doesn't want to pay for this. And I'm hearing that a lot more, mm-hmm. you know, whereas before I would only hear that on a small time, mm-hmm. you know, but now they're even saying, you know, some of the big, big companies are pushing mm-hmm. back more, but... It's just, you know, it's in, kinda, in, yeah. insurance cost is going up. You sure. Know, they, yeah. You know, everyone's complaining your auto insurance, homeowner's insurance. Mm-hmm. The rates are just just rising. Is your, is your family involved at all in your business? Any of your family? No. Uh-uh. No. Uh, my kids are young. Um, but your brothers or your sisters? I that... just have two sisters. Yeah, one, she's still at USAA. Um, she's been there a long time. And then my other sister lives in Corpus. Mm-hmm. And um, she doesn't. She never got in. Neither of my sisters got into business at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Besides the the saving the the back and the leg work and the, <laughs> and the, all the grueling part of demoing, what what inspired you to kind of get this going? Um, well, back back then it was really two things. One, you know, I I didn't like the dust myself when I was mm-hmm. doing the demo. I hated it mm-hmm. um, for the customers, mm-hmm. not just me, but mm-hmm. I, you know, you you take pride in what you do. Mm-hmm. And when you finish doing demo and you just dust all over their house, right. you just feel really bad about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then the second was, I did see the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, I did see the opportunity that to get off my knees, you know, mm-hmm. to scale mm-hmm. the business. It's hard to mm-hmm. scale as an installer, right? Mm-hmm. Cause anytime you train a guy and he's really good, he just yeah. goes off on his own. Cause it's easy to, mm-hmm. to grab a few tools and do it. But were you worried, were you worried about the, the health factor? Of kind of, I, I was because yeah, back in 2013, I did get involved with um, um, some nutrition, some people that were pushing and teaching me more about nutrition. So health was a factor, and then, you know, recently, this, this is more recent though. But my my dad got lung cancer, oh, and uh, he passed away a few months ago. Oh, sorry to hear that. You know, he we've both been doing this our whole lives. You know, I've been doing it like I said since 15. Mm-hmm. So. I know how bad it, it can be. I've seen mm-hmm. it firsthand. Mm-hmm. And um, so now more than ever, it's important 
You're just more conscious of that. Do you think that was a contributing factor with just being him being around this, just kind of this trade forever? Or? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, I mean, because, you know, the joke is, as most installers may be, I don't know. I know I was. We joked about the cancer. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we're mixing thin set or tearing up. And, it, you know, when you're young, you're invincible. So mm-hmm. you really, you just didn't care. Yeah. But now that I know a lot more about it and I saw what happened to my dad, you know, it. the thing about it, is you will never know you're being injured, you know, until, until it's too late, too late. And, tw- you know, even you're hearing our guys, you know, we do have an inspector that goes around and make sure all our guys are wearing their PPE, you mm-hmm. know, earplugs, gla- glasses, mask, knee pads. And, and I tell them all and everything. I said, all this, you, you, you may never need it. But if you do that one time, you, you know, it's, it's for sure. important. Like the glasses, I said, you may never need glasses it's, but the time you do need it and you don't have it on and something hits your eye yeah. you can lose your sight and your hearing you won't know for 20 years mm. but then when you start losing your hearing you know you can't get it back so health is a is a is a big part of it and you know for homeowners it's important but your installers too right yeah. like i said i was an installer and no one was really looking out for us on our health mm-hmm. you know yeah and I think it's important for installers to to use either our system or buy their own if they want to, um, and just protect themselves from this. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a good business, man. And it's, it's funny because there's, like, there's always a business for something, you know. Yeah. And you never, you know, you think about it afterwards, like, oh, okay, that's a good idea, you know. And uh, time out. I need to stop saying the word. You know, my wife keeps telling me I'm, it might have to be a drinking game. Every time I say, you know, you drink. <laughs> You know, you know, but uh, anyway, um, one thing I have to do also, I have to mention this. Um, I always try to optimize my algorithm. That's just the term I just throwing out there. I can yeah. share about that later, but <laughs> it's perfect your craft basically, right? And doing what you're doing. And um, is there any way uh, or things that you need to tweak in what you're doing still uh, in your business? Oh, definitely. You know, it's important. You've got the system, but just as you learn, as you go, you're able to kind of. Well, I always want to stay ahead of the game, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm always kind of thinking of five years from now. What's it, mm. you know, cause I, cause I don't want to get behind. So I'm always, you know, we go to Vegas every year to the convention, um, where it's a concrete convention, but oh, they have okay. a, a lot of new tools. They always yeah. introduce new tools and I'm always going looking for, for what's next. And, and I'm always looking for ways to improve. Our process. Um, I mean, it, when you own a business, you know sure. it's it's a constant you know, grind. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant grind, and yeah, we're always just trying to stay ahead of things. Mm-hmm. And um, I definitely there's some equipment we can improve. Um, for right now, it just it works really well, and they don't have there's no equipment on the market for some of the things we do. So we make we make it ourselves, but we can definitely make it better. Um, so we're just we're constantly looking for ways to make the whole process better and more efficient. Mm. Also, because obviously a big part of our what we sell is manpower, mm. right? It, it's there's that's what a lot of contractors call it. Is I don't have anyone to do it. You know, mm. can you do it? You know, we got fifty guys, so that's, that's kind of you know, that's we have fifty guys, Lord, in, in the three locations. Mm-hmm. So that's part of what we're selling is mm-hmm. the manpower. Mm-hmm. So to make them more efficient, we need to make their tools better, the process right. better, right? So they can do more with less. Yeah. Because what's well, it's that's investing in them too. So that way they're not kind of getting beat yeah. up every day and they'll they'll be with you a little longer. So Yeah, make it easier on them. They'll they'll be happy. And uh so always trying to improve our equipment mm-hmm. and our process and then you know, our customer service, like I said, right. uh, I wear a lot of hats, so it's hard to get out, but I, I definitely want to be able to go visit with customers more, mm-hmm. not just our, our homeowners, but our stores. Like Yeah, yourself. circling back to that, I, I thank you for that, but that's one thing I actually learned, uh, not learned, but I just need to kind of re- reacquaint myself with doing as well, because for, for, for me, being... Uh, in this industry for as long as I have, you sometimes take your business for granted. Yeah. And uh, that, uh, you know, referral source that, you know, always kind of feeds you, it may not always be there. And if you're not constantly in, in their space or maybe in the radar or or thanking them, someone else is going to take your place. And and I've kind of learned that more recently just with a couple of experiences where, I mean, I had one, one restoration contractor that, was just giving me work 
you know, black men wearing um, left and right. And mainly because I had a relationship with one gentleman and and uh, we'd always take care of them. We'd always kind of stay in their budgets. And but, you know, he trusted us and he would always give me these these jobs. And um, well, he took off to work somewhere else in a whole different industry. Oh, wow. And then that that whole like that faucet turned off. Right. And I'm yeah. like. Well, what happened? You know, so I'm, yeah. I'm, now I'm, I'm over here, you know, trying to connect with some of these other PMs or other people that I didn't have a relationship with. And that's kind of what's reinvigorated me here more lately is to kind of get back to rebuilding those relationships and not taking things for granted because uh, I don't care how long you've been in business, you know, there is such a thing as customer loyalty, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, the next shiny thing that comes along gets your attention. You forget about, you know, this guy over here and, uh, so I, that's what I've been working on too. And I think that's good if you're, if you're able to, to get out there and, and just make sure that at the very least just kind of staying in people's radar, man, just kind of making sure you're there so that they know that you're there for them. It's important. So that's good. I don't know if you take all your top clients, uh, uh gifts no, like this, but no, no. <laughs> there's only a few of those uh, ever, ever made. <laughs> no, but a collection of two is only yeah. one, one out of two. No, yeah. but, uh, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good, man. I, that is very, very important in business is to make sure that you're top of mind with your past and even your past clients, right? Because yeah, 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 no, that's that's why we hired the sales guy that you know to do that because I I just don't have enough time. I would love to do it every day, hmm. um, but we hired him to get out there and and try and just keep on my you know. And it's interesting because we say this all the time that if I'll go visit a client I haven't seen in a few months and they haven't given us a lot of work, I go visit them, talk to them for a little bit, say thank you. Couple of days later, hey, I've got another job for oh you. Oh my god, it happens every time. It, it's so interesting <laughs> though because it's that whole mindset with the sales guys, and I tell my kids this all the time. I have a rep who uh, comes to my store maybe twice a month, and do you think I give him business? Absolutely. Yeah. Like he he's got a display there, and and you know, I, I go to his products and I sell his products. I had another rep, kind of the other end of the spectrum who came in about a year and a half ago and uh, spent a few minutes there and, and, you know, say, Hey, we got this display, you know, we got this products, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll give you some space for it. Put it in my showroom. Didn't get much tra traction with the product. That rep didn't literally come to my store till a year later. In between then I found better use for that space. So that rep comes back a year later, a year later. Hey, Where's my rack? <laughs> How come you haven't given me? You're not a good suit for our business. I'm like, go ahead, take your rack. It's yeah. in the back of the warehouse. <laughs> like, what does that mindset tell you? It's like, you know, you, you as a sales guy, you can't expect someone to sell your product or give you business just because you put a display in their store. Yeah. But if you're there constantly educating, serving your client, you know, again, top of mind, staying on their radar. It's amazing how much more as a sell, as an owner or a company is going to want to give you business because you know what you're building a relationship and you're like oh this guy's a pretty good dude you know or this guy actually working hard to earn your business I've never been the type that needs to be catered to or like hey you know you need to like come you know every week take me out to lunch no, never yeah. never been that way I've always like man if there's a guy there that you know uh, is just there if I need him I can call him man I'm I'm gonna lean towards that product or that service more you know often than i would with someone else because there's a relationship being built so to your point it, it it's it's not necessarily about well this guy doesn't give me business so i'm gonna go pay more attention to this guy that gives me more business it's like okay yeah we want to cater to this guy too but you know what let's build the relationship over here too and that's kind of something that uh unfortunately that a lot of sales guys don't understand and they have, you know, it's two different mindsets, but at least in my opinion, you know, you always have to stay connected, even if it's a customer that doesn't really give you as much business. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I learned that too, that networking isn't about what can they do for you right now, right. or, you know, they may know somebody else that right. could bring value to you. Right. So networking, meeting just anybody, you know, whether they're someone that you will be your customer or mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. having having a network of people mm -hmm. that you know you can refer each other mm -hmm. and that's what i've always liked about networking too for and, sure you know i remember back um it's been a while now but i met somebody only had one job for us wasn't a big deal but they introduced us to a store because their son went to school mm -hmm. with them 
and that store is one of our biggest customers wow. now. There you you know, so you even though this one person wasn't going to bring us a whole lot directly, mm-hmm. yeah. they were indirectly gave us, you know, something very big. And yeah. so I always look at that, like, don't ever see one relationship as too small mm-hmm. because you just never know. For sure. And so that's why it's always been important to me, you know, if, if like, you, for instance, take you, you know, mm-hmm. we, we hang out every now and then, mm-hmm. you know, I like you. Mm-hmm. I hope you think I'm a good dude. And you I like do. me too. <laughs> but, you I know, do now, especially. <laughs> yeah. But say a competitor does walk in your door and says, yeah. Hey, I've got dust lists and yeah. we're better with this yeah. and that. You, you'll do two things. You One, how much you charge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll call me though. And you'll yeah. tell me, Hey, yeah. so-and-so came in and this is what they said. Yeah. And so I'll know about it. Yeah. You know, the other thing is if, let's say we go out to do a job for you and it's not right. You know, they didn't do a good job, mm-hmm. whatever. The guys had a bad day. You'll call me sure. and tell me, hey, you guys didn't do a good job. And I'll say, I'm sorry, Richard. I'll, I'll definitely take care of that. You know, whatever I can do for you to help. Um, but if I don't have a relationship with you, right? you're not going to call me. Right. All you're going to do is call our competitor and say, hey, I want to use you because these guys there, messed there, up. There's so much truth in that because in, in all the countless jobs you've helped me with, they're, they're not always perfect. It's your freaking... <laughs> demoing you're busting out people's floors and there's inevitably maybe a hiccup here or there but without fail i know that you're going to take care of it and yeah. that's for sure means a lot and um and you know let me ask you this and, and i like to uh and we've never really had any conversations about this i'll just ask you so i always like to kind of sprinkle in a little faith into the conversation mm. with this particular podcast because the i know a guy is the guy that that that's uh, uh, up yeah. there that's why i always tell people to point up because oh, cool. uh, i know a guy's uh, a, a friend of mine or someone that I work with that I collaborate with that's uh, in an industry that I can refer to people. But the I know guy is the gentleman upstairs that has always kind of helped me through my business, through my ups and downs. So uh, t- talk to me about that if you if you, if you you will. Uh, how has faith helped you in your business, in your endeavors? Well, it's interesting. So I feel there's been a lot of things that just have happened. Like I said, the, the whole, you know, we go visit someone and a couple of days later we'll, we'll get a job. It's, you know, I understand how that works, but there's been just a lot of things that fell into place so perfectly. Um, you know, you, you, you've got to think it's got to be coming from, from something else, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I was raised in a very religious household. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, studied the Bible a lot, you know, mm-hmm. um, so when it when it comes to God, um, you know I've I've had a lot of studies in it, and just just being honest, mm-hmm. you know I don't personally still I'm not involved in that a lot. Okay. So you know as far as that goes, I don't know how I feel about that. No, I appreciate you telling me, man, because honestly, uh, I, I preface it by saying we've never had this conversation, right? So because uh, I definitely respect. Where people come from man my biggest thing is not really religion it's just relationships yeah and, and, and for me that's kind of what's more important because even um you know what guides me could be different for for someone else right but i know from our relationship that we have you know you're a good guy you're a good dude and i'm not gonna not do business with you because we have different backgrounds and beliefs but you know it's just for me it's something kind of that i'd like to like learn and to um really connect with people even if we're not yoked necessarily the same but it's still good to like know each other and how and learn how to we can help each other right how yeah how we can kind of bridge the gap sometimes in a sense if that makes any sense but yeah definitely i mean i i i do have faith i just not sure what it's what it's in i know there's something and uh like i said i I, it was ingrained in me from from a baby. What what do you feel something because because of that? Do you think you got pushed away? Um, I just yeah, I always had like these doubts in my head, you know, being told over and over, mm-hmm. and I was I was like, what are these doubts about? You know, why do I have these? So when I you know in my twenties, I just started thinking on my own, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the questions I had just could never be answered, mm-hmm. and with that, I just you know, I said, you know what, I'm, this is what I'm, I choose to believe in. Mm-hmm. There may be something mm-hmm. higher. I, I, I'm sure there is something, mm-hmm. but, um, I don't want to, I don't want to bank everything on mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just going to live. I'm going to be a g- great person. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still going to use the principles I was taught in, right. in how I live, my mm-hmm. morals, my ethics, my, you know, how I treat people. Um, and I'm going to be thankful to whatever it is or whoever it is that is right. helping me in my life. Like I said, I do believe there has been some, you know, whether it's the universe or or or, yeah. or a guy uh-huh. who's been helping us in this process. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been so many things that have happened that are amazing. Mm-hmm. Um that well, it's like those things that you say you're in your 20s you didn't have the answers for i mean you can say that now right there's still things i just turned 50 and there's still things that i sometimes question or or um i don't know if doubt actually enters my mind anymore because I'm, I'm i'm definitely stronger in my relationship with god now but you know of being around you know uh, religion too at an early age from my dad's side of the family, which was more Catholic, my mom's side of the family was more um, uh, Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist, which oh, okay. was uh, a lot of it's legalism, you know, don't do this, do that, which can be a turnoff. And then as I grew <clears throat> and, you know, started going, I uh, had kids and then went to a non-denominational church, kind of Bible-based church, uh, kind of late 20s, early 30s, that I started getting more of a connection with just having um, a relationship with God Christ specifically. And then again, always being a good person, always having good morals. But for me, it was important just to have some sort of the principles and the structure for me to, to guide, not guide me, but like just, uh, you know, learn from. And, um, and we, we, we we're not perfect, man. We waver sometimes, but I got so much testimony where I feel God has helped me, you know, God has been there for me. And, I can, we can talk about that over coffee or yeah. over scotch later, but, yeah. uh, um, you know, there's definitely something there, right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you can't explain it. We don't have the answers. And, and, um, all I want to be for you, brother, as an encourager, if I'm, if you need someone to call or talk to, I'll be here for you and then vice versa, you know, and that's yeah. kind of the community of men that I, I like to hang around with, you know, people nice. that are positive and, or not necessarily men, but women as well, but like people, that you can kind of get in your circle that you know you can count on. And um, s- some of it's, you know, based on, on your relationship with God. Some of it's not, you know. I got a lot of different friends and we're all in the different, you know, ends of yeah. the spectrum sometimes, which is sometimes challenging, but I enjoy it. I'm still trying to learn. Yeah. I'm still trying <laughs> to get get better at it. And, um, you know, again, I want to be here for you as much as I can. And we actually are a little over an hour now. And I got to um, just tell you, I want to thank you for, for your business and for just helping us and in, in, in what you do, man. You, you all did do an amazing job and you've got a great, um, you know, group of people that work for you. Uh, I just have experienced it and thank you for that. So, um, yeah, thank you for having me. You know, the feelings mutual. I think, you know. I know the way you run your business and who you are as a person, you know, you're definitely one of our, our best companies that we work for. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here, but or I, because I, we did a YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really, I really, you know, yeah. how you conduct yourself yeah. and your integrity. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And it, you know, you're smaller, right? Mm-hmm. But that doesn't, like I said, mm-hmm. For a small company, I, I don't know if you have salespeople or if you mm-hmm. do it all as mm-hmm. well, but you give us definitely a lot of business for for yeah. as small of a right. operation you have. Right. So I, you know, I commend you for that. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, it's a good relationship. So awesome, brother. Well, you know you. that whenever I have clients that need flooring removed and they want a dustless system, I always tell them I know a guy. All right, Brian Hankins, appreciate it, man. Thanks thank you dude. so much.